Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Max Payne 3 Hardcore Difficulty video walkthrough. This is chapter 8, ain't no reprievement gonna be found otherwise. So we're in the cemetery near Max Payne's family's graves. Lovely sentimental moment for him there, but it's quickly dissolved by the fact that the mob boss who we killed the son of earlier has sent a, a massive bounty on our heads, so we have a bunch of hit squads waiting for us in the cemetery to try and kill us. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pick up a second pistol because this wouldn't be Max Payne unless we're, you know, shoot dodging with double pistols and you want to move down this road. There's going to be a bunch of guys coming, you can hear them before you see them and uh, I found it easiest to take them on near this crypt that I'm about to stand next to with the conifers just here. Here's the first guy, use your cover trick, pick him off and uh, just be careful because the reason I think this is a hard level is because it's hard to see people. There's loads of graves, there's loads of trees, they can see you through conifers, you can't see them, and all bullshit like that which are going to get you in trouble if you're not careful. So just take it slow, and just, like I say, be careful. There's a couple sections coming up which I'm going to have to talk about pretty much in depth, because I found them hard, and I'm hoping you don't. How awesome was that? That guy just, <laughs> just full on rolled over the bench and face planted on it. I love it. But, uh, you might wonder why I don't pick up the Ingram. Or the, the Mac 10 which I keep calling. Because it's actually called that on this game. Um, it's a good weapon but I find it too inaccurate. I find the double pistols to be more functionally beneficial to me. That's why I'm not going to pick it up. It's just a preference. You might disagree. Feel free to do so and do your own thing. Uh, this bit's kind of tough. First thing you want to do. Kill the guy who's got the grenade launcher because he's a douchebag. And then come off the cover so that you can do the shoulder trick. Because aiming out of cover at this moment to kill these guys is a pain in the ass, And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Because the amount of times I've been trying to shoot these guys and they've just been getting one or two shots on me and wasting my painkillers. It's unbelievable. But as soon as you kill them all, when you move up, make sure you pick up as much ammo as you can. Because pushing out of this little courtyard is, is one of the harder parts to the level. Because there's a, a weird cover glitch where... It's, there's no gap in the cover, it's concrete for Christ's sake, it's a structure that's been made to last. There's no holes, there's no gaps, and I get shot through it. And it's happened to me twice, and it's always on this right hand side, so I do not recommend going on the right hand side. Do you see this bit here? Where I'm, to my right just there, they can shoot through this wall. I don't know why. It, it don't make any sense to me, but... It's happened, so I would definitely recommend going up here from the left-hand side. I'm going to break this rule because I use both sides, and this shootout coming up gets really sloppy, but you've just got to do whatever works, and like I say, I have such a hard time seeing people on this level that it makes it more difficult than it needs to be. But use the graves as cover, play intelligently, and you do have painkillers to spare, so hopefully you won't be stuck here for too long, if at all. But I'm just going to talk quickly about the, the Devil May Cry reboot. Because I'm going to swing it into a topic of Max Payne. So it, it does work. But I was watching a developer diary the other day for it. And it was showing you some gameplay and it had a guy talking over it. And I was really impressed because I have absolutely no apprehension towards this new game at all. I have much faith in Ninja Theory. And I don't mind an overhaul to a series. I'm not this die-hard person that thinks everything needs to be the same. There is one distinction though, if it's going to be an overhaul, make sure you overhaul it. If it's just a sequel, then it has to adhere by certain tropes. And what I mean by this is, this is a sequel to Max Payne, so this should have everything that makes a Max Payne game. This is not an overhaul, this is not redefining it in any way, this is not trying to change it, this is just trying to add a different chapter onto it. But, watching the gameplay for The New Devil May Cry, it looks fantastic. It looks different, it looks weird, and I can't wait to get my hands on the controller to find out how good it feels. Look at that dickhead over there. Can you see him? It's like, I can't see a thing. I'm just relying on, you know, the red dot on the reticle, and luckily enough, I managed to hit him before I die, but that was really close. But, I'm, I'm really excited for the game, and in its defence... I don't understand where all the animosity is coming from because the, the the comments on the video on game trailers were were ridiculous. It was just everybody slating it, slagging it off, and you know, judging it before it's come out. And we're all guilty of this. It's just human nature. But 
I don't understand it when it comes to Devil May Cry. And the main reason is... They're changing everything, and everyone's afraid that it's not be going to be good because they're changing things. Yet, Devil May Cry 2 changed absolutely nothing, and it was the biggest bag of shit I've played in a long time. So why the fuck is everybody so worried about change? It makes no sense. And to, to swing this topic round to Max Payne, when they originally announced this game was going to be in Brazil, it was going to be during the day, Max was going to be bold, they also announced he was going to have a different voice actor, and I was crushed. I was absolutely crushed. It wasn't the bold thing, don't mind a bold guy, absolutely loved Vin Diesel in a man, in a, a man apart when he got his bold on and got super violent. It was nothing to do with Brazil, I don't mind the look of Brazil, I like you know Hawaiian shirts and shit, that's all good. It was the voice actor. Max Payne is McCaffrey or McCaffrey or whatever his, his name is. I don't know if there's a silent T in there somewhere, but McCaffrey, I think it is. That is Max Payne. He will always be Max Payne. Like, fuck Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, sit down, son. Mark McCaffrey is Max Payne, and his voice will always be that. And To tell me you're going to change the voice actor in the third game, in the sequel that I've been waiting for for a long time, fuck you, sir. Fuck you in the mouth. That's just not how it rolls. And luckily enough, that wasn't true. They, they ended up getting the original voice actor, but originally, they wanted to completely overhaul the series and, and change it as much as possible. So, I'm grateful that they left, you know, a couple of small mercies in there for me, because I would have been really upset. But, I do wish there was more reference to people from your past, but when I think back to it, Max pretty much killed everybody from his past, so, you know... Kind of interesting. Little plot hole as well that I've noticed. There's a sequence where Max is admitting uh, his affair with, with Mona was kind of like a slight on his family, but he blames guilt for it. And Mona's never really mentioned in this game at all. There's one sneaky little reference to her, if you caught it, and it's on a television, because it's like Mona Hotels or something, and the voice actor who does, or the voice actress who does the, the, the voiceover is Mona Sachs' voice actress, which I thought's a really good touch. <laughs> but she's not in the game, and there's no real mention to her. And a lot of people, when I've seen, you know, reviewers or, or, or websites for gaming who've been covering the game, doing quick looks and things, and, you know, playing it while recording for, for our viewing pleasure, they've all mentioned the reason that Mona's not in the game is because she died. Mona didn't die, guys. If you played Max Payne 2 on any other difficulty but the hardest, Mona died, and it sucked. If you played on Dead on Arrival, she didn't die. The red behind her was the carpet, it wasn't blood. She gets up, she's alive. And that's what a lot of people don't know because Max Payne 2 was hard as balls on Dead on Arrival. And I, I wanted her to come back. I wanted there to be an elevator that came down on this game opened up and Mona was there with the Desert Eagle. I wanted it to just be that deja vu moment again of Jesus Christ, it's Mona turning up in another elevator. And and Max even mentions a lot about elevators because he's got a lot of history with them, but it never happens. Anyhow, guys, this is the hardest firefighter of this level, in my opinion, because there's a lot of dudes, the cover is ridiculously bad, and it's long range and it's hard to see people, so... As soon as it starts, run over to where I am in this, this corner and just shoot people directly across from you. You're so far away that they seem to have a lot of trouble shooting you. Once you've covered your right hand flank, you need to start eking out and killing the rest of the guys. Be under no illusion. This is hard because of the environment and nothing else. If you do it this way though, you'll be safe and hopefully you'll be able to nail them nice and quickly and take minimum damage. Every other approach, you know, coming out of cover, rotating around the arena, has ended up in me getting shot from a distance. This is the only way i found that works every time. And uh, unless you're some kind of, you know, ridiculous magician with bullet time, you're probably going to want a cheesy technique as well. On a final note, anyhow, kind of like a closer of my feelings on this game, because... I think it's kind of a universal feeling that this is a great game, but there are certain aspects that make a Max Payne game that could have been better. My exclamation point, you know, statement is the wordplay. Sam Lake is a fantastic writer. If you don't know who Sam Lake is, Sam Lake is the original face of Max Payne. 
although he's doing a bit of a squint. He's also the, the story writer and I think the director of, of the series on when it was at Remedy. And he's the guy that does all the writing for the story and everything that Max says has probably been written by him. And it's same with Alan Wake and you can tell because he has a very distinctive writing style and I love writing. I, I, I think the English language and the way people use it is some of the most beautiful things you can you can see. And the way Sam Lake uses it in these, you know, gritty, noir slash, you know, metaphorical, extremely colourful language and, and, you know, really visual uh, litanies, basically, because that's what they are. It's poetry, what he writes for, for some of the monologues that Max has. And it's brilliant. And this game is not as colourful. This game does not have the wordplay. It does not have the same level of flair. It's still good. It's still gritty and there's a lot of wit there, but I don't think it's at the same level. I don't think it's anywhere near the level of the first two games. And sure, there is a level of cheese there. There's a machismo that goes with it. But at the same time, there is so much metaphors happening. It's it's painting pictures. And this game kind of doesn't have that, that, that colourfulness, which is a shame, but, you know, it's a grittier feel. It's a much more, you know, tougher game. So, thanks for watching. Anyhow, guys, you take care now.